A special Stuart 5A steam engine repair part 7, packing the glands, testing the lubrication system and running the engine on compressed air. The manifolds on the steam engine are very large, so to save time I hammered a specially modified cork into the hole, and by using this method I can attach my airline to the engine very easily. Before I run this engine to see if my repair is a success, there are one or two other jobs to do. And the first one is a simple job, it's called packing the stuffing glands, and first of all I'm showing how not to do it. In this clip I'm trying to poke the graphited yarn up into the stuffing gland using the end of my scriber. This is definitely not a good way to do it, there is a much simpler method. Carefully wind the graphited yarn around the valve spindle, like this. Once you've wound the graphited yarn around the valve spindle, push the whole lot up into the stuffing box. You may be thinking, well, how do you know how much graphited yarn to use? And the answer to that is you don't. If you put in too much graphited yarn, the gland nut will not engage the threads. So once again, using the end of your scriber or a small screwdriver or whatever, just poke out some of the graphited yarn and cut it off with a pair of side cutters. The stuffing glands on a 5A are different to the ones you will normally find on smaller models. They have a metal part that pushes the gland material up into the gland and that's tightened into place with a ring. And this generally follows full size practice. I worked on a big water pump a while back, a full size one, which used exactly the same system. When you're repacking glands, make sure you don't put too much in so you can't engage the thread. But don't put in too little because if this gland nut goes right to the top then it's not going to be compressing the gland at all. Even though it looked like I'd put enough gland packing in, I hadn't. So I just added some more. And this is the second lot going in now. And once I can get the last piece of graphited yarn to go into the stuffing box, this should be okay. So why do they use this system on steam engines? Well, if you think about it, it's the best way possible. Some model steam engines use silicone rubber o-rings, but I still find gland packing this way to be the best way to do it. While I do the other end, I'd just like to add that modern graphited yarn is nowhere near as good as the old stuff. I'm sure that modern graphited yarn is probably safer to use. I think the old stuff probably contains asbestos. But once it's safely in the stuffing gland, well, I would think it's safe. The only contact you have with it is when you're doing this, and I'm really not sniffing it or waving it about. It's fully loaded with graphite, and when it meets the valve spindle, it also gets oily, so I don't think there's too much danger of breathing in asbestos from doing this. A quick health and safety warning, even though some viewers appear to think it's a waste of time, if you don't want to die horrendously in later life by using hazardous chemicals and asbestos, it's a good idea to wear some PPE, personal protective equipment. One of the drop arms was a bit loose, so in this clip I'm very carefully tapping the pin back into place. This is a taper pin, and by tapping it, it's seated better. This is a ratchet-driven mechanical lubricator and this is what lubricates the cylinders. I've connected the air supply and watch what happens when the engine rotates. As you can clearly see, it's not working properly. This is not good. What you're looking at is the main lubrication system, not only for the mechanical lubricator that lubricates the cylinders, but it also rotates the cam at the bottom of the engine, which powers the other oil pump to pump oil to the bearings. And this lower oil pump for the bearings is driven by a very large gear, which in turn is driven by a smaller gear on the other end of the ratchet wheel shaft. I'm fitting a temporary oil supply because I don't have the tank. I'm using a funnel at the top, which is connected via a piece of silicone rubber piping to the oil inlet at the bottom. The idea being that when I put some oil in the funnel, it goes down the rubber piping into the original oil pump pipe, and when the ratchet drive is working properly, this oil will be pumped into the main bearing. As you can see, this is not a very good state of affairs. The ratchet is not ratcheting. Occasionally it will go over the tooth, but it needs to go over the tooth for every revolution of the crankshaft. Anyway, I fixed it. I just moved the pin a bit further down the slot and made sure that the nut wasn't tight. And once I got the nut nice and slack, it's a nylock nut, so it's not going to vibrate loose. Now everything works fine, and you can see how slowly the lower cam revolves. 
and to the left of the picture you can see the very large gear wheel that drives this cam. In this clip you can clearly see that when the engine is running, every revolution of the crankshaft advances the ratchet wheel by one tooth. So the problem of the damaged bearing is more complex than I first thought. It wasn't just some dirt in the bearing, that wouldn't help. But if the oil supply was intermittent, not only would it be not good for the cylinders, it was definitely not good for the bearing that received the least oil. But now everything seems to be working fine, that is until the next day when I looked on the bench and there was a pool of oil. There's an oil leak where the main copper pipe meets the pump. This will also need fixing before the engine is returned to the owner. I'm playing about with the reversing lever, going from forward to reverse, and everything seems to be fine now. Don't forget it's sat on my soundboard so it's amplifying any mechanical noise. Plus the engine's wobbling about in my soundboard, that's what the knocking is. But I think I can say that the big end repair is a success. The brasses will need tightening after it's done a bit of running, so I'll do that next week. So what's this strange sound? You can relax, it's only me testing the drain cocks, and yes, they work fine. For the rest of the video, I think I'll just leave the engine running in its main bearing. So that's it from me for the moment. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.